How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JJAR review. And today I probably have the biggest product that I've ever reviewed on the channel. Um, this comes at a price tag of about $440. It is a early birthday present for me. Um, and this is the Oculus Quest. This is a standalone 6 degrees of freedom VR headset. And it's just the headset with the internal components and then two controllers that are tracked by these cameras on the outside. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the back side of the box. This has a multitude of different games that it comes with. Right here we have Vader Immortal, Sports Scramble, Dance Central, National Geographic, Explore VR, Dead and Buried 2, and Creed Rise to Glory. It says, all-in-one VR, Oculus Quest has everything you need to explore VR right out of the box. No PC, no wires, no limits. Precision controllers, with Oculus Insight tracking and touch controllers, every move, punch, and throw instantly feels translated into VR, or no, are instantly translated into VR. Easy setup in any room. Play at home or someplace new. Oculus Quest works with your environment. Standing or sitting in spaces big or small. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's all about. So it looks as though we just slide it off. Also, I got the 64 gigabyte version. There's two versions. There's the 64 gigabyte and then the 130 gigabyte, I believe. But for me, I think that having that will be just fine. Alright, so this is what the inside looks like. It has that uh, Oculus symbol on the front of it. Let's go ahead and pull this up. It's really nice and smooth. Ooh, look at that. So right off the bat, we have the Oculus Quest headset just sitting and resting in here. This is what the headset looks like. It has the cameras over here on the side. It has an adjustable IPD, which means the distance between the lenses and your eyes. They spread and they move for different uh, eye shapes. It also has adjustable Velcro straps, so when you can, you pull this out like this, you pull it in and it'll adjust to the size of different people's heads, which is really cool. And this side we have a headphone jack, and we also have a headphone jack on that side as well. And then over here it says, before you start, install the Oculus Quest app. But if you take this off, it shows you the lenses on the inside. It has a really nice uh, mesh feel to the outside, very soft. And then when you take this off, this is where you get all of the good VR-ness. And if you look, when I move the little thing, the lenses move back and forth. And the reason behind that is because there's two separate OLED panels inside, one right here and one right here on kind of a cone shape that goes directly down onto the OLED panel. That way they, that way they can move separately and independently between each other and you'll still get the same picture in each eye. And right up here we have a proximity sensor so when you put this on your face it will automatically light up. But yeah, this is the headset and it works with a USB Type-C. They just came out with the ability to hook it up to your computer via that port with some beta software, so I'm excited to try that out. And right here we have the infamous touch controllers, which all have touch capacitive sensors. We have one right here, 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 and here. So when you rest your fingers on them like this, it knows whether your fingers are touching the buttons or not. And it has a joystick, which I like a lot better than the HTC Vive ones. And it comes with two of these, one for each hand. All right, exploring a little bit further into the box, we have some of the things that we're going to need. 
in order to get this all nice and set up. We have the glasses separator. So if you wear glasses, that keeps the lenses a little bit farther away from your face in order for you to uh, not scratch it up. We have a USB-C charging port. And then we also have a long USB Type-C for charging while playing as well. And then right here we have ourselves two batteries, very nicely uh, placed in here. That's really cool, very premium the way they do this. And then we have the instruction booklets, which we're not going to look at. There we go. Let's place this back in here. And then we're going to move this to the side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on my phone, install the Oculus Quest app, and then give it a quick boot, and then see if I can show you guys some through-the-lens footage. So, stay tuned. Alright, as you can see, I put the phone to the lens. Unfortunately, when I have it like this, it won't show anything besides the needing to create a guardian. But this is what the inside of the lens would look like. It wouldn't be as flashy as it is right now. Um, normally it would look a lot better than that, and you wouldn't be able to see the rings either. Uh, it has a really nice, crisp kind of uh, view. Right now you're seeing kind of the inside-out tracking, so you can see the uh, microphone right here. But yeah, so this is the Oculus Quest. Unfortunately, I can't get a ton of uh, footage from the inside of it, but even if I was, uh, it is a virtual reality device, meaning it is a lot better if you are the person who's physically wearing it versus seeing it on a video. But yeah, it has a really nice uh, design and feel, even on the outside. It has this nice mesh feel, and then on the inside too, it has a nice... Uh, soft mesh for your face and your nose as well and all together um i had to put it on my face while um setting it up it is very comfortable a little front heavy compared to other ones i've tried but all together i think that it is a solid headset i look forward to using it and today's going to be a little bit of a shorter video i have a lot of stuff going on for the holidays but uh i have something really cool here this is a mystery box and this is something that you'd get usually at a convention or uh different types of events and uh you basically have no idea what's going to be inside of it um i was given this to review by my fiance's uh mother and i don't know what's inside so let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. So the outside uh, looks just like a wooden box. And this is by uh, stylinonline.com. So let's go ahead and open this. I'm sure she knows what's inside, but I don't. <laughs> and pull out a cup. This looks to be a, what is his name, Dr. Robotnik or something like that from Sonic the Hedgehog. This is a pixel style art cup with kind of a gradient looking um, silvery kind of black glass and it seems to be printed on here pretty well. This is copyrighted by Sega. It says right here. Brought to you by Surreal Entertainment 2016, made in China. That's all printed on here as well. Now, one thing about these cups is you definitely do not want to dishwasher um, wash these because this kind of stuff peels off very easily. It's almost like a plastic type coating and it will flake after it reaches a certain temperature. So I definitely would suggest hand washing this. And if we rotate it, the back doesn't have anything, but the front of it has that really nice design. So you could obviously use this cup for multiple different uh, purposes, uh, primarily probably like iced tea or soda or something like that. But yeah, I think it's a pretty neat cup, and uh, I know this is a short video, but I have a lot of really cool stuff that I'm going to be unboxing for the rest of the week. So yeah, I hope you're looking forward to that. And as always, and today we're going to be looking at this car cup mount holder. Now this is a phone holder that actually goes in your drink cup in your car. 
and it's it's really interesting because rather than having it hooked up to your vent where it could possibly fall off you have something that's a little bit more sturdier to hold your phone which is primarily what I was interested in and right here on the side it gives a depiction of what it looks like and then right here on the back we have a uh, depiction on the instructions which I'm probably not really gonna need but it says attach it to the base attach the phone portion that holds your phone to the wire and then you can adjust it as well for the opening I believe to tighten it for different types of cup holders and that it also opens up and down and from the sides so that's what's on the back and then it shows how to dismantle it but let's go ahead and open this up and see how it works I'm not going to be putting it in a car but I definitely can uh, see how the mechanism works all right, this is what the inside packaging looks like. Let's go ahead and slide this out. So it comes in a few different portions right here, it looks like. I'm going to slide that plastic off. Right off the bat, this feels pretty premium, and I like it a lot. It looks as though I was right on the sliding right here because the more you slide this the more these actually come out which is really cool so you can get a really nice steady kind of tight mount for your phone how cool is that and it has a resistant rubber on here too that's built really well of course we have the wire which is actually really stiff so it's going to hold your phone really well and then the clip as well which we need to still unpackage we go let's put that to the side so right here we have the phone mount and it opens here from the bottom and then it also opens here from the sides as well it has a nice little click to it so that it stays where it needs to stay very nice resistant rubber on the back also keep your phone protected so it's not all completely rigid it looks as though we have a uh, assortment of little pads right here you could probably put this in here just in case your phone is like really small if you're still using like an iphone 4. all right let's go ahead and attach the phone portion to this so it looks like we have some little hooks in here and it just clicks right in all right there we go so i set it up right there so now we can actually um the phone in and see how it holds so I'm going to use my Samsung Galaxy S9 and I believe the actual way it's supposed to hold is from the bottom to the top right here because it has a thing to charge your phone and it actually has a slot right there which is really convenient so let's just go ahead and push it on here and then we can adjust Alright, I moved it back a little bit so you guys can see it, but as you can see, it holds the phone pretty well, like I'm shaking it, and it's a very stiff wire, see how there's like no give? Like when I'm moving it, there's no like wobble or anything, so if you're moving in a car, it's only going to move like maybe this much, and you'd have to be going pretty fast. But I think the coolest mechanism in here is, is this really premium feeling uh, resistant rubber, and the fact that when you turn it, It adjusts really wide, like really wide. Like look how far these come out of here to uh, put it in your cup holder. And if you want to just put it back so that you can take it out in case your friend has a drink, all you have to do is turn that thing and then, you know, throw it in your back seat. So that's actually really nice. And uh, I'm going to give this to my fiance's mother. And uh, oh yeah, there's resistant rubber at the bottom too. So yeah, this thing is not going to be going anywhere. All in all, I think this is a really solid design, and I think that you'll enjoy it very much. Also, look at this gnarly scratch I just got on my phone the other day. R.I.P. Oh well, <laughs> still works, right? And today we're going to be looking at this Silk Ribbon Tea by Tea Spectral. I'm going to go ahead and link them in the description below. They sell this tea at a uh, good price, and it is absolutely delicious. All the other ones that I've tried are really good. Let's go ahead and read this and see what's in this one. It says, indulge in luscious chocolate and almond alluring rose petals. Made with black tea, rosebuds, 
almond, vanilla bean, roasted cocoa, carob pods, natural and artificial flavors. This is a black tea blend which should be seeped at a roiling boil around 212 degrees Fahrenheit for about four to five minutes. Steep a little bit longer for a stronger brew if you desire to take this with milk or a little less to drink it by itself. So yeah, let's go ahead and open this up and then I have my little things to prepare it over here and let's see how this tastes. It has a little tab up here. Opens pretty easy, like all the other ones I've tried. Let's go ahead and open this up. All right, and this is what the tea looks like. Let me put a little bit on my hand so you guys can actually see this. What's really cool about this tea is there's actual pieces of all of that stuff that I read on the front in here. Pretty large pieces of it, too. I can't really differentiate the different pieces of it, but it's so... It's so interesting seeing how all of this stuff in here kind of makes up what the flavor is going to be. That one right there just kind of looks like a stick. I'm kind of dropping it all over the place, though. What do you guys think? Isn't this cool? All right, let's go ahead and fill this up now. I have myself a nice little thing. I got these see-through so you guys could see the process. So you just remove the top of this guy right here. And it has a little reservoir in here that you put the tea inside of. So let's go ahead and move this right here and then put some tea in here. Alright, so I probably put a little bit more than I probably should have, but uh, I like my tea strong anyways. And now what I'm going to do is lock this onto here. I probably should have added the water first, but oh well. Let's go ahead and pop this off. There we go. Just set that to the side, and I have my hot water in here, so I'm going to try not to spill it everywhere. There we go. Alright, so I went ahead and cut and actually added a little bit more hot water. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to put this on here and watch it as it steeps. And I'll probably cut for the four to five minutes, but let's see if we can get a little bit of the tea seeping into the bottom real quick. You can see the tea's kind of just like pouring from the top and then kind of separating out into the rest of the water. It almost looks like uh, like smoke, like I said in my last video. It just kind of pours the flavor of the tea out into the water. And up here, it's completely still crystal clear water. I bet you could take some of that and it just, you wouldn't even be able to tell the tea flavor. But the entire bottom layer actually has the tea in it. And if you mix it up like this, I'll cover the hole so I don't get anything on my desk. You can see the water slowly starts combining into a solid tea color. How cool is that? I really like myself a uh, nice kind of relaxing experiences like this, making some tea and then, you know, just treating yourself in general. But I'm going to cut to where it's about five minutes and then we're going to go ahead and try it out. All right, and it's been about uh, five minutes, and as you can see, the tea has really gotten a lot darker. Let's go ahead and shake this up a little bit and kind of evenly distribute it out. It's getting a little bit on the desk, but I'll just wipe it off. There we go. I'm going to grab my little cloth I got right here. I'm going to have to get a new setup soon anyways for the bottom because all my stuff I've accidentally spilled. But yeah, let's go ahead and grab this and pour some of the tea. I'm going to do it with my dominant right hand so I don't mess up and spill some more. And here we go. And since I prefer my tea with milk, let's go ahead and add some of that too. And again, I am the most horrible pourer. And uh, grab myself my towel again. There we go. Kind of ruined my satisfying moment that I wanted to point out, but I really like how the milk kind of uh, moves inside of there. And because I am a diabetic, I'm going to add myself some saccharin. 
All right, here it is all mixed up. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it a try and see how it tastes. Wow, this is really good. Every time I have their tea, I'm always really surprised at how good this stuff is. Um, I definitely can taste a bit of that chocolate in there. And uh, it's really good. Surprisingly, it mixes really well. And it is it's a very good blend of tea. Like everything that really works together. All the notes hit just the right way. I'm going to go ahead and give it another try real quick. This is really good. I am probably leaning this one a little bit more than the previous ones that I've reviewed. Um, primarily because I really like the sweetness of the chocolate, but the other ones are good too, don't get me wrong. But this is definitely something I could see eating or drinking when it's a little bit more colder like it is right now. But yeah, this has been the Silk Ribbon Tea by Tea Spectral. And if you want to get your hands on some of their tea, like I said, I'm going to have it in the link in the description below. But yeah, what do you guys think? Is uh, tea something that you really like drinking when it's cold, or are you more of a coffee person? Let me know in the comments below. And today we're going to be looking at a My Madi Enjoy Your Music MP3 player. Now this looked really interesting on the Amazon posting, so let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging, which I find to be very nice. It has a nice kind of textured kind of outside to it. Kind of a little bit of a reflective sheen, almost kind of looks silver on the camera. Inside of that, it has a sticker on the side right here that says uh, MP3 player with Bluetooth 5.0 black, new and made in China. So let's go ahead and set this down real quick. All right, now let's go ahead and open it up. So right here we have the mp3 player right here and if you notice i'm doing a different camera angle transition which i think looks kind of cool let me know what you think of the comments below because i think some things need a little bit of a different angle to be able to kind of show off how nice they are all right let's go ahead and remove this here we go and this is the packaging that it's in let's go ahead and move it to the side it's a very kind of soft cellophane feeling kind of thing. A foam protection. A breakaway thing. You just pull this out. And it comes with a pair of headphones. and a micro USB charger. And if I sound a little bit different today, it's my throat, it's, it's that season. So trying to get past the a sick feeling. Let's go ahead and take this out of here. It has a nice weight to it. And here it is, it says, Please peel off the mask after application complete. So it looks like it comes pre-installed with a tempered glass screen protector. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Yeah, it has a tempered glass screen protector already installed on it. How cool is that? And then it also has a micro SD card slot right there. It's the on and off buttons along with the charging port and headphone jack. Hello iPhones. And we also have a up and down for the volume rocker along with some kind of thing right here. I think it's the lock key. Let's go ahead and open this real quick. The little screen protector thing. That's satisfying and it's stuck to my hand. So this is what the screen looks like. And it's really impressive that it has 
and I'm pr a protective layer on it already. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but I am almost 100% positive. I don't know if you can see right there that there's a little lip right there. I believe that is an already installed screen protector. But I'm not going to pick at it and test it out. Alright, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see how it works. Oh, also on the back it has a built-in speaker too. So that's a neat little thing they got going on right there. I'm assuming we hold down the lock button. Or press the on switch. There we go. <laughs> Alright, looks like it's turning on. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like um I like things that aren't cell phones that have touch screens. It's uh I don't know, it's just something ever since I had my first uh iPhone not iPhone, uh, iPod touch third generation. I've been fascinated with non cell phone based things. Let's move this out of the way. There we go. So let's see, we have photos. Obviously there's no files, so I guess it exits you out. We have video, nothing, it says we can record though, it says start recording. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. About what I would expect for a MP3 player microphone. Um, very sensitive though, so you definitely be able to pick up a lot of different stuff. Let's go back. And now we have books, so I believe you can read books on here too, that's really cool. Obviously there's nothing in there, so it's just going to close out. Which is interesting that it does that. One other cool thing is, is it already has a battery charge. I always say, if there's battery charge in it when it comes in, I... I'm very grateful so I don't have to unbox it and then plug it in to unbox it because you kind of have to be able to test the product when you get it, you know? All right, and now we have tools. So we have Bluetooth, and you can just turn that on right there. It says searching, but I don't really have anything uh, Bluetooth here around me. Let me see. All right, so I did a quick search, and I was able to find my HDX Titanium. So if you just click on it, it'll connect. That's a little bit loud, but it connected. Don't worry about the static sounding. That's actually the speaker I got it from Goodwill. So it actually connects to Bluetooth, which is very good, which I'm assuming it would have, but I always got to test it out just to make sure. It says decompression artifact is interesting. I'm not sure what that is. That's actually kind of cool. That's like a little miniature piano. So you can record yourself doing this and you can make notes on here. It looks like we have different things too. is actually kind of cool. You know, this would be great for a kid, too, because if they wanted to, like, have something like a phone, or maybe they're not old enough for that, they could definitely listen to music on this, and they could have fun pressing on the little piano keys. I don't think I'm pressing hard enough. There we go. Very cool. And now it has a radio as well. All right, so we went ahead and got a connection on the radio. As you can hear, there is some music coming from it. It isn't the best um, radio thing that I've ever seen. Um, it's a little bit um, staticky. I can't seem to hone in on a good signal. That could be user error, but uh, it also could be the device as well. Um, but I wasn't really, you know, too interested in listening to radio anyways. I think if you're going to listen to radio, you'll be listening for the songs you like, and then you just put the songs on the MP3 player. So there's that. You have a calendar, which is a Google looking calendar. And it looks like you can add notes as well. And then we have a stopwatch. 
which works as a stopwatch. There we go. And then of course we have a calculator. It looks like there's some kind of games on here, like uh, kind of the old style phone games, which is kind of cool. So right here we have Tetris. Sorry, I'm not used to this camera angle. I keep pointing it downward. All right, number before start. Let's just press start so we can rotate the piece. Kind of cool. Definitely would be fun for like if you wanted to get this for your kids or something like that. I'm going to have this linked in the description below. For what it is, it's actually pretty good. Touchscreen's pretty responsive. Um, I just feel like I'm used to using my cell phone, so I don't press it hard enough. I think this might be, it's not a resistive touchscreen but I definitely think you need to tap it a little bit more harder in order to be able to get the desired effect. But I, I'm always afraid that I'm going to say that's a lot better. Yeah, that's how you tap on it. I'm going to exit that. And I'm not going to check out all of the games in here. I think that uh, we pretty much get what kind of games these are. And then, uh, yeah, we also have some tools, it looks like, which we already went through. And then the general settings, brightness goes up pretty bright. Um, it has a screen timer for uh, if you um, want to set to where the screen turns off for a certain amount of time. And then this is 8 gigabytes, so you can hold up pretty much, I'd say, a few thousand songs can hold up into in the gigabytes of using B3s. And then they have advanced. Looks like you can format, factory settings, it had a save electricity option, so probably a battery save, and then volume as well. But you can also expand the storage with a card, a TF card or a micro SD, and that can give you pretty much as much as you want. And yeah, so here we are. This is test music. Let's go ahead and try that out. Turn that down a little bit. All music, test music. And this is directly from the speaker that's inside of it. Funniest thing. That is a original version of a Nightcore song that I normally would like listening to. I think it's called Moonlight Shadow. Yeah, except this is the original version. That is hilarious that I actually know the test music on here. That's so cool. And I think that's it. And everything that we've done on here so far hasn't drained any battery, so that's a good sign. And then, uh, yeah. Pretty nice glass on the back. Gonna get fingerprints though, as you can see. But that's pretty much with anything that has a glass back, including iPhones or Samsung. And then I believe on the outside. This is actually a metallic shell. It's not plastic, so that's actually pretty premium. And the these are also uh, plastic. Uh, most buttons are plastic, though. But yeah, and uh, just charge it up with micro USB, and I think you're good to go. All in all, I think this is a pretty great MP3 player with a lot of extra options in it. But yeah, what do you guys think? I think it's a pretty decent mp3 player and I'll have it linked in the description below. I think the only thing that I found that wasn't perfect but still worked was the radio and that could be just because of the area that I'm currently in. But yeah. And today we're going to be looking at an Amazefan Dinosaur Light. Now this has a 7 color display, it's energy saving, it's operated by USB, it comes with a dimming remote control a smart button, and it is safety certified. It says product name Creative 2D 3D Stereo Lamp, acrylic high penetrable organic glass, light source imported LED, light color 7 colors, input voltage is 4.5 to 5 volts, output power is 2 watts to 2.5 watts, 
and base dimensions is 89 by 89 by 4 T millimeters. And we have the package dimensions as uh, 210 by 153 by 55 millimeters. And then the base material is ABS plastic. I've got to move this out of the way. Now this is the box that it comes in. Plain brown box after you take off the sleeve. Let's go ahead and open this guy up. There we go. Has some uh, padding for protection it looks like. And it also looks like you right off the bat get the shape of the dinosaur. Looks like a T-Rex. Has some protective film on it too, which is good. And then over here, it looks like we might have two of these actually. We have a, I believe that's a Velociraptor. Very cool. And again, this is by Amaze Fan. It says, we'd love to hear from you. And then this is their uh, support card. All right. And of course, it comes with a little instruction booklet right here. I'm going to zoom in on that. It says, optical acrylic light guide plate, touch sensitive function, ABS plastic base. It takes three um, AA batteries or a USB cable, so it can be wireless. And then it shows the directions of the remote, which we've seen a lot of these on this channel. And then this is just the back side, cleaning with a soft cloth, how to use, all that. It, it's a light, we don't really need to go over that too much. I do like how this remote, versus some of the other remotes that I've had, which I don't see them around here, actually is uh, black, or like a nice dark gray. I think it looks a lot nicer. Let's take out the battery thing. And then this is what it looks like. It probably has a uh, plastic piece on it too that we can remove. There we go. Look, it actually kept the little uh, shape of the buttons. That's kind of cool. And now look how shiny it is. There we go. So there's that. And then it comes with the USB uh, cable, which is micro USB. Let's go ahead and take off this twisty tie. Cord's pretty long. And then we got this guy, which is the base of operation. And it has a little thing right here to take off and put in the batteries, which is probably what I'm going to be doing. So I'll go ahead and leave that off, actually. And then I just need to find over here some batteries, which I have some. There's one. And two. And three. I've got a Costco-sized pack of batteries next to my uh, desk. As you can tell, it says Kirkland. Let's go ahead and put this in. And then this one. And then this one. Oh. Bent the spring a little bit. Looks like it's already on. And turn that off. It is touch, too. It's touch screen. That's pretty cool. And then I'll show you what the inside looks like after I put this cover on. Which I accidentally touched again, so I'll go ahead and do that immediately. <laughs> Alright, it's back in there. So as you can see, there's a row of LEDs inside of here. And when you touch the sensor right here, they change color, which is really cool. Pretty bright, too. And this is a, I believe, infrared sensor. So it's where the uh, remote, you should point it at. And then in the back, this is where you charge it. I personally, 
probably wouldn't recommend plugging it in while there's batteries in it. I'd probably say one or the other since they're not rechargeable batteries. I don't know if it would uh, affect anything or not. Let's go ahead and move this box out of the way though. All right, so we have two different things of plastic right here. And they have uh, the dinosaur depictions, but it also has a protective film layer, which I need to go from this direction. There we go. Now it's really nice and shiny. And then we also have one on the other side too. Now this is so it doesn't get scratched, which is awesome that they actually decided to put that in there. It's always good to have protection on things like this. There we go. That is completely see-through. All right, let's go ahead and uh, slide this in. All right, so right when I popped it in, I went ahead and uh, adjusted my lighting. And look at that. How cool is that? All of the uh, lights perfectly run through from the top to the bottom into the uh, dinosaur. And that is just amazing looking. I think I'm on the wrong side too. Actually, no, I'm on the right side. And now let's go ahead and press the button. That is really neat. So each time you tap the button, the dinosaur will change a different color. This is really great for like, uh, maybe like a Jurassic Park enthusiast. And then it has a changing color too. Ooh, we got an RGB, I really like that. So this one cycles between all of the different colors slowly. That's really cool. And then of course we have the remote right here. So if I press red, it turns red. And there's also brightness. So if I turn up the brightness, oh, it's already max brightness. So I can turn down the brightness. And I can turn up the brightness. We can just do plain white. Or we could do um, a green, like a sky blue, orange, what's this one? It's hard to see in the dark, uh, yellow, a kind of uh, purplish, a darker purple. There we go. And I think the standard ones are just like a red, a green, and a blue. So yeah, works pretty great, and let's go ahead and try out the next dinosaur. So you can just easily remove it, just like that. Alright, and then let's remove this. It might be a little bit darker, because I'm still in between loading this one in, but I just wanted to uh, show you guys me taking off this plastic. And then we're going to dim the lights again. All right, here we go. We got the T-Rex. All right, let's go dark. One, two, three. And actually, let's start the T-Rex off with red because it's the T-Rex. Let's do this. And then press down. And it locks it in. But it looks like when I locked it in, I accidentally uh, changed the color with the touch thing. Let's go back to red. Look at that guy. I like how there's no lines on the eye up here because it totally makes it look like uh, he just has like a black pit. He's like staring at you. How cool is that? And when you rotate it to the side too. This is probably one of the coolest nightlights I've seen and you probably can get different plastic inserts too for this, I bet. I'll have this linked in the description below but I really think that this is a really unique uh, light and as a fan of Jurassic Park definitely something up my alley and let's turn it all the way around you can actually see right here in the center the light pushing up through here it's amazing what LEDs can do especially when pushing through glass and then to this side so you can have the dinosaur facing any direction it'd even be cool if you had it like on a uh, like a rotatable platform that would be cool what do you guys think? I think it's a really unique night light, and I definitely would suggest checking it out. Um, I 
I'll probably end up putting this next to my bed, probably, or again, gifting it to one of my family members. Shh, maybe it's a stocking stuffer. You never know. And today we're going to be looking at this Vaunt Digital Kitchen Food Scale. Now this is really interesting because this is made out of stainless steel. It has an alarm timer. It has a precise measurement as well for like weight. And it also has a thermometer as well, which is really cool. And this is what the front looks like. And the side. And if you want to check out their uh, social media. And then the back uh, kind of just has the same stuff. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's all about. It was actually only a week ago where my fiance needed one of these kind of things. And uh, now we have one, so it's pretty cool. I got my hands on one of these. Let's go ahead and pull it out. So this is what the inside packaging looks like. Let's move that out of the way. Comes all nice and wrapped up. Looks like there's two portions to it. This looks to be the bottom, so let's go ahead and take that out first. So it comes with the bottom battery cover and then the instructions and then a thank you card thank you for your purchase uh from bond and uh this takes two AAA batteries so i'm gonna go ahead and grab some of those and pop them in all right so i went ahead and put in the batteries right there so let's go ahead and put on the battery cover real quick There we go. And now we can flip it over. And oh, it's already on. All right, so I went ahead and turned the lights down a little bit so you can actually see right here. It actually has a light up display. And I put it down right here. And it's actually zeroed itself out. You can kind of see it right there. So if I grab my flashlight that I had from my previous video and I set it right there, it lets me know that it's 4.52 ounces. It also lets me know that the temperature right now is uh, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which seems about right for the room. And let's go ahead and move that back. And now, of course, we have the bowl. So let's go ahead and take out all the stuff in it. This is what the bowl looks like, which isn't even really necessary if you wanted to um, maybe just use this as it was to weigh something. We just put the thing on top. And then right here, I believe this resets the uh, weight to zero. And then let's say you wanted to measure some stuff out. So right here, I got some almond flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the almond flour in here. And you're not gonna be able to see the display very well. Right now it says it's at zero, but I'll let you know and uh, maybe I'll be able to zoom in on it a little bit. Let's go ahead and add this in here. So it already moved to 0 0.53. And I didn't fill this all the way up to an entire cup, but right here it shows that it is 1.41 ounces. And let's see what these other things do. So this sets it to Celsius, and then that sets it to Fahrenheit. And then this does it to milliliters, and then grams and then ounces. So it has all of these options right here. And uh, all you have to do is reset the weight. So even if I had the, let's say, um, flour in here, I could actually reset the weight and it would go back to zero. So you could definitely do multiple things in here. Um, so that's really cool. All in all, I think the uh, design is really nice too. And it's made out of solid aluminum and uh, yeah. So if you wanted to bake yourself a cake or you needed more precise measurements, I definitely think that this would be something that I definitely check out. I like it a lot and I'm excited to use it in the kitchen. And today we're going to be looking at some rechargeable USB flashlights by Venia. I'm going to go ahead and link these in the description below. And it comes in a plain brown box like this. 
If you look at the top right here, it says rechargeable flashlight, new, and made in China. Besides that, I think it's just a pretty standard box with an unfoldable top shell. So let's go ahead and open it up. The first thing I notice off the bat is the micro USB peeking out right here. So it has a included micro USB. And actually, it has two included micro USBs. Because there's two flashlights. So let's go ahead and take out the flashlight. It comes in a nice little thing of bubble wrap to keep it safe. Wow, this has some weight to it. That's nice. So this is what the flashlight looks like. It has a kind of silicone cover to cover the USB slot, so that's good for moisture, because you don't want any moisture getting in there. Comes with a nice, really hefty clip if you want to keep it on your side. That thing's not going to be moving anywhere. And it looks like it unscrews right here as well. It's probably to uncover the rechargeable battery. Yep, here we go. It has a 4.2 volt and 2.5 volt, it looks like. It says don't heat. Well, I mean, most of the time you don't want to heat. So it's a rechargeable kind of standard battery. Let's go ahead and load that back in there. So this is replaceable if you got the right one if it ended up dying. But it is rechargeable, so it should last you a while. Let's move this back a little bit. Aside from that, this is what the front looks like. I'm gonna zoom in on that real quick. Kinda has like a really fisheye looking kind of lens on it, you can see that right there. So let's go ahead and turn this on. So this might be a little bit of an awkward cut, but I actually didn't realize that there is a thing in here blocking the battery from uh, making a full circuit and I thought it wasn't charged so I did this thing where I was like okay I'll be right back I'm gonna charge them but they're actually already charged um, all you have to do is take off the back and there is a thing to remove that then completes the circuit and then you just screw the back on again And voila, we have light. All right, so now that we know that it can turn on, we already know that it has a really nice magnet here at the bottom. And it can hold things that are pretty heavy too. So if I had this knife right here, it actually can hold up the weight of the knife, which is really impressive. And then we also have the light itself, which is pretty bright. So as you can see, it creates a really nice kind of like round. Let's move this out of the way kind of like a really nice round soft circle and it has this little ring right here that if you pull it forward you can actually focus in on things like a projector all the way down to the actual LEDs you can't see it on here but it actually shows the LED kind of diodes and you can go all the way back to like a really big one and the farther away you get the bigger the uh, circle gets so you can get the entire area if you press it again, it'll get dimmer, or you will probably can be able to see the flashing because of the uh, LED frequency. And then it actually comes from here as well. And then warning for uh, more flashing, this is actually strobe flashing, so if you click it, it'll blink. And don't forget it actually comes with two of these guys right here, so you get two of these really nice, sturdy, hefty, rechargeable multi-purpose flashlights with the bonus magnet on there um, in one package which is really cool I really like the silicone on the outside helping to block things from getting into the USB slot and yeah I think that these would be really good in case of like uh, emergencies or uh, you know maybe the power went out and you needed something for a little while and maybe you had a portable charger like this guy right here and you wanted to charge them up with that and then that would give you even more power for a longer uh, period of time so yeah 
lots of uses, very good build quality, and I definitely would suggest uh, checking them out. But as always, a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Feel free to check out my Patreon. I have a $1 tier to a higher level tier that you can go ahead and uh, check out. Lots of different options there, and it helps support the channel. I'm also thinking of possibly opening a P.O. box. Let me know if there's any kind of interesting items you'd like to send to me, especially if you're from another country. But yeah, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.